Thank you for joining me for the DPF retrospective. I did not compile this history myself. A man by the name of Kent Perry, you could find him on FetLife, actually compiled a very long and detailed history, which you can find at understanding.infantilism.org. So please go there if you want to know the entire breakdown of before DPF, after DPF, and all its stages in between. So at some point in the mid-70s, the newsletter Fetish Times decided to conduct a poll to discover the most popular fetishes amongst its readers. There was quite a response as the newspaper reported, and the editors and writers were in shock to discover that um, many people were into infantilism, which had placed second as their most popular right, before, right behind uh, bondage and discipline. There, uh, before DPF, there was Florence of Milpitas, California, and she would sew uh, baby clothes for big babies. That's what they were called back then. And you can uh, mail order catalog from her. And she also had a publication called The Crib Sheet. Occasionally, publications such as Penthouse Forum and other mainstream uh, sex type magazines would include letters from people into the scene and um, other kind of underground newspapers like Screw, Fetish Times, and the LA Free Press would feature articles or even pictures. Back then there was no term ABDL as we know it. They called themselves big babies, infantilists, infantilism. That's the term I am most familiar with from when I found the scene. There was also Infantile Press out of Seattle, Washington, and they had a long life publi publishing magazines and pamphlets such as the Playpen and Tales from the Crib. And I think we have a picture of the Playpen right here. Issue one of Diaper Peel Fraternity, which what it was originally called before changing its name to Diaper Pail Friends to be to hopefully um, attract more females. That was sent out June 1st, 1980 to 26 folks. It was a whole four double-sided pages long. Issue 2 was issued on July 2nd, 1980 and there were 54 new members. By April 2001, issue 117, it had grown to 36 double-sided pages. So yeah, back in the day, you had to fill out a form and mail it in to be included of, of, as well as your money. Tommy then asked for members' contributions, nothing in, nothing out, stating that if you want to receive, you've got to give too, because this is all about them. If nothing is contributed to the DPF information letter, then there is going to be nothing in it for you. So please mail something interesting for inclusion. So it kind of acted like a message board. In September 81, the yearly membership increased to $10 per year. In 1983, he announced that membership was about 50-50 gay and straight. In January 84, in the January 84 newsletter, he, met, he announced a meeting of all members in August that summer. It was called Baby Week 1984, and everyone was, everyone was invited to attend a series of activities, dinners, parties, hikes and cookouts in various parts of the city, as well as the north area of San Francisco called Mill Valley. Uh, 24 members attended, and I actually have the report with photos from that from that baby week in 1987 when DPF changed from a hobby to a full-time career Tommy quit his job as a banker to handle the DPF business full-time by the end of the decade DPF was selling all kinds of items like several brands of diapers at least one developed and marketed by Tommy himself plastic pants um, Baby Heaven and Lang, and all types of APDL clothing, locking diaper pins and alarms, baby paddles, as well as stories and videos, um, along with the newsletter publications.
and hypnosis tapes too. So if you want the entire full detailed history of DPF, please go to understanding.infantilism.org and we thank you, Bitter Gray and Kent Perry. Now let's meet Tommy, where he was featured on a Jerry Springer episode about, about big babies in 1992. Tim is 61 year old businessman, Tommy. He wears and uses diapers all the time and likes to act and be treated like a toddler. In 1980, he founded an organization called Diaper Pail Friends. Yeah. Okay. What, what's going on? But when you want to be nurtured, maybe get a little hug. You know, maybe the guys take you out for a drink or something. I'd like to say something here. Yeah. I think one of the damaging things in society is the, is the whole misconception of age-appropriate behaviors. I mean, what is age? Time is just a concept. As a measuring tool, we need to know when we have to be somewhere. But as far as age-appropriate, I mean, how can you tell people that when you're 18, everybody has to behave in a similar fashion, or when you're two, you behave in a similar fashion? People should be free to act in whatever way they wish, unless it's hurting someone else. Anybody disagree with her? She makes a good point, huh? Someone want to disagree? Heidi, Tommy, anything, uh, anything happen in your childhood that, what's that? Well, I think that my, my uh, mother tended to be a little bit distant, uh, and my father was um, not the kind of person that was willing to accept all parts of me. He was very rigid. He sort of in insisted that I, in order to be a successful man, I'd have to behave a certain way. And the actual part of me is very broad. Part of me is very dominant. Part of me is someone that runs a fairly large business. But there's a softer part of me. The people, the business, what business do you run, if you don't mind? What kind of business? You don't have to give me the name of it. I run, it's called Dr. Pale Friends. Which oh, you that's right. right. Yeah, so. That's my business. So you don't mind telling people what yeah. you're doing? Tommy, what do you get out of wearing diapers? Well, first of all, I really enjoy it. And I enjoy the sense and the feeling of it and the freedom. But it brings me closer to this whole issue all the time, you know, and I'm really involved because I run this organization. We have thousands of members all over the world. There are thousands of people that do this, you're saying? Thousands and oh, thousands. There are tens of thousands, but there are, <laughs> there are only thousands that are members of the organ organization. See. Many people don't join because they're afraid to, you know, come out in public. And it's it. a good thing that Tommy has started this organization because it gives people like me an outlet for expression, and I think we all need to express ourselves. Well, I think the key thing here is the right to be what you are as long as you're not out of balance. And one of the key things that we preach is balance in life. This, first of all, balance is inner because I balance all these different parts of myself and the part of myself that my dad didn't let me express is is balanced now and expressed and you might ask well, why do you have to wear you know act act like a baby to to show this softer part of yourself and that's a very good question there are other ways but this is a way that works for me and thousands of other people you can get out that softer part of being a baby because all babies are not macho Baby girls and baby boys, they act the same. But why can't you just be a sensitive adult? Could be. I mean, aren't you, well, in a sense, defeating oh. your whole purpose by saying you can't be sensitive as an adult, so therefore I've got to act like a baby? Wouldn't it be better to devote your attention to being a sensitive adult? I do both. My sensitivity as an adult is in the, is, has enabled me to make this worldwide organization, the purpose of which is to bring people out and let them be themselves. And we did not choose, to, and we did not, in essence, choose to have these fetishes and desires. And if you keep it inside, it's very painful. And it's very good that DPF exists so that we have an outlet for this expression. People write me and they say that they were on the verge of actually committing suicide. A very small percentage, 1% maybe. But others write and say, I thought I was the only one in the world. Imagine being living for 30 and 40 years alone with this secret thing. And all of a sudden you find out there are others that have this feeling. It's like a whole world opening up. Okay, come on then. Get off the pie. You know diapers. They don't need to. Uh, wait, I haven't wait, been on it they, for that's years. That's why they're wearing a diaper. <laughs> I'm a nurse, and diapers are also used for bladder problems. Now, come on, let's tell us. You got a bladder problem. I'm having all three of them. <laughs> come on, you tell I, us. I mean, you know. Well, well, I probably have one now because after not using a toilet for five years, it's... Are you saying you have not used a... You wear those all the time, not just for the show or not just... Uh, uh, I happen to wear them all the time. 
Now, of the thousands of people that are belong to our group, they vary like you do. Some wear them once a month, some wear them very rarely, some wear them all the time. I, it's I like don't know all how human else to variations. Say this, but there could be some very uncomfortable moments being around you. Uh, <laughs> I mean, isn't that true? Aren't you? I mean, you're in a social situation. Isn't that kind of a private thing, and it ought not to be just Definitely. hanging around? Believe it or not, it does not cause any problems at all. I happen to like the opera and the symphony, and I go to concerts all the time. And the and the person sitting next to me has no idea. No, I'm just kidding. I have two questions. First, for the female, the real one. Um, why? Before you said that you didn't think this was a disorder, do you really think this is normal and you don't feel there's a problem? Um, well, there, there are many types of variances in this world and this is one of them. And uh, the normal thing right now, I guess you could say the normal is missionary position, heterosexual, no fantasy. I don't, I don't even really subscribe to the concept of normal. Hey, what, what's normal? How does someone you're married to and you live with, how does that person not know you're wearing diapers? It's, it's not a good thing, is it, to hide things like that? Well, were you able, how were you able it to hide it? It was very difficult. And what I try to help people now, and I even publish things called the, called the Mommy Solution, where you could probably tell your wife, because 95% of people who are into this are male, for reasons that you can probably understand. Do, you don't? No. Okay, let me give you an example. Here's how, why they're mostly men. You walk into a teenager's room, 14, 15 year old teenager, and there's a bear on the bed. Is that teenager a girl or a boy? You're beginning to understand that there are things that boys cannot express and that they're able to express some of these things that they want to, but with balance. Can't okay, and I guess the problem, and then we're going to take a break, but I, I guess. The question that we're, we're having difficulty, or I don't want to speak for everybody here, but a lot of people seem to be having difficulty here, is we can understand balance, and we can understand wanting to be more sensitive, and yes, having teddy bears in your room, if that's what you want to have, but when you get to the point that you're 61 years old and you're drinking out of a baby bottle, which can only be a political, it gets to be a political statement. It isn't, why is that wrong? I'd like to know, why, why do you think that's wrong? I, I don't know, I'm not here to pass judgment whether it's wrong. What I am wondering is why is it necessary to make that kind of a statement when it's much easier to get liquid out of a, uh, a bottle that doesn't have a nipple on it. Because it's the, not, the effect necessary. comes from being a baby oneself. And by other people saying that we shouldn't do this is, as, is like putting us in handcuffs and me saying to a, a quote normal person, when you make love you can't kiss that person, you can't do what you normally do, you can't. It's, it's like I'm sitting here explaining to you okay. To you, why I have, why my hair is the color it is. It's so essential to my personality that to explain that. These are all the publications that I borrowed off uh, the owners of Changing Times, who were generous enough to let me take them home and read through them and do a video about them. These are all DPFs. That pile, that big pile there, those are from the 80s. Here's some from the 90s all the way up to uh, 2002. And here is one called the Diaperland Reporter, 1986 from ABC Design. So this one is not a DPF. Let's just thumb through it. By Amber E. Is this one a DPF uh, newsletter? At this time, there are over 75 issues of Crib Sheet magazine. Oh, okay, so this is the Crib Sheet, I think. I don't really know. Oh, these are, um, are stories that you can order. And you pay for them. You pay for... Uh, written stories, printed stories, to be sent to you. Oh my goodness. I don't know how much of this I can show. So here's the order form for the stories. So you select which story you want. How much are they? Five to six dollars. Then you got to put in your credit card number right there or send in cash money order bank check and um, 
also <laughs> calculate your taxes and shipping I know none of you young kids have done that here's baby week this one was DPF's first like annual meetup so they did a whole report newsletter um, on this with some pictures in there and so forth of what they did all week true baby experiences this was number three six dollars I think this was um, in the 80s but I'm not totally sure but inside there are it's not really this it's um, a bunch of other stuff in it tales from the crib magazine I think this is the order form for it each issue is six dollars Oh, here we have a guy getting babied. Some guys in diapers showing off their plastic pants and stuff. Oh, here are some instructions on folding a cloth diaper. What, from 1982? And this one is published by Infanti Press, uh, which is not DPF. It is a different company and people write in with their letters and stuff so cool <laughs> they're covering their faces they sent in some photos geez all the photos had to be scanned it was such a pain in the ass DPF did some special interest reports which is different than their monthly newsletters so uh, here's one on catheters. It was written by a DPF member. Very cool. Wow, this literally feels like a school report. All right, I'm going back to college. Oh, here are some order sheets for stuff. I'm not sure what. Pacifiers, big nipples. How much are they? A pacifier with a big nipple was $13.95 and it is only 50 cents for shipping. Wow! That is amazing. Toddler shorts, $21. Shipping $3.50. These are pretty go good prices, I think. Big baby bib, $15.95. That's about the size, uh, that's about the price of a bib now. Let's see this one. How much are the onesies? $35, between $30 and $35, $36. I'm not sure what year this is, though. the diaper land reporter so here are a couple other of the DPF special interest reports um, this one they comprised of letters that people would write in telling their stories so this one is Bay Kids in Diapers I feel like I should make videos I should make some I need a mommy videos from uh, some of these stories I have reading material for ages oh this one is wet pants and bedwetting I uh, that's a subject I really enjoy Wet pants in high school oh yeah I'm definitely gonna use these as scripts for I need a mommy <laughs> And here's another one. This is not a good name. Baby Love. <sighs> yeah, face palm right there. So cringy. Here is another Baby Love. Baby Scotty and Baby Mommy. So what is actually inside of a DPF newsletter? We are taking the oldest one in the collection, which is October 87, and comparing it to the newest one which is February 2002 
So every single DPF newsletter starts with Tommy writing a, an editorial piece about whatever is on his mind. And then it goes into letters from the people, from the subscribers. And here's a really interesting one. Is DPF straight or gay? And the answer is, it is for everyone. He does not care what your sexual preference is or how kinky you like to be. Just be safe and don't do anything illegal and find others that you can share your feelings and needs with. And that's what it's always been about. And I like the wording in this. He, um, before ABDL, before the, the term was coined, then they would call it a big baby, baby and diaper games. <laughs> and, and, oh, sex games, okay. They just call it sex games. I love that. Diaper sex games. Letters comprised of about half of this newsletter, and the other half is the uh, members roster where you can list yourself and provide as much information as you want so that people can write to you. You can include your phone number and your address or P.O. box, and yeah, people would actually have to write and make pen pals the old fashioned way. Now, what's interesting when I I'm not going to show you the whole roster there. You saw it. Um, now, when I scanned through the roster really quickly, I did see a few females in there, but mostly were all men. And it was really interesting because every single person that was listed there were, was Caucasian. I guess people of color just kept their things hidden. I don't know. But that was kind of surprising. I thought it would be a little bit more diverse than that. I actually found a newsletter dated June 1994 and that is when I graduated high school. So that was a big moment in my life that I can remember. So I just wanted to look at this one. Oh wow, it's our 14th year. And one of the biggest changes is that they have a uh, table of contents now. Wait, what is this? Is Tashi a true DPF member? Oh. Here's another question that people might have now is how do I contact babysitters? I'm confused about how to contact the babysitting services listed in the newsletter. There are names, cities, states, zip codes, and occasionally phone numbers, but they don't seem to have any addresses. Oh, and then it's letters from the members. Oh, and some comics. Sharing. Oh, I think these are product reviews and opinions about, or tips about stuff. Oh my goodness, look at the size of that car seat. <laughs> the best of DPF. Oh, that's kind of cool. And there's the roster, and the rest of it is, um, these are all pages and pages of people. And here is the last one in the collection, which is dated February 2002, the 23rd year of DPF. And at this point, DPF was online and had a pretty big online presence. But this was still a very, very thick newsletter. Most of it is the roster, and the table of contents is a lot more detailed. Ooh, there's a lot of party news. Tampa Bay Area Diaper Fest. Like, I'm looking through all these, and it seems like there was way more parties back then than there is now. I don't know if I'm just... I don't know. Here's a letter that someone wrote about uh, being Catholic and enjoying baby play. It's okay to show his face because he requested that he that this picture of him be posted on the internet and in the newsletter so Tommy was happy to publish it here's a call your mommy service uh oh what's this why don't meet others
Does my wife enjoy this? It kind of seems like a Reddit board, just in print form. Oh, yes. So Diaper Central. It's a private home with a fenced yard. Please be discreet when going in and out of the property. This is not a sex party. A sexual activity it can be a cause for you to be asked to leave. It's a social party. This sounds super fun. Okay, it's $35 a head for the whole event. Is this an overnight party? I think it is. Obviously, I am reading the Halloween party report. About half the group brought or wore costumes. I'm so disappointed. So I'm looking through the regional party planners, and who do I see? Mako Allen, the ABDL author and host of Big Little Podcast. Lack of courtesy. Some people need a lot of reminders about how to behave online. I still see there's just a lack of courtesy. I've seen guys basically chase women out of the chat room, and if they just use common sense, it wouldn't happen. Yes, this is true to today. So the mail order forms would be the back few pages of each newsletter, and then you can have your um, print, have your <laughs> roster listing in the printed newsletters, and. Oh, free online listing on the World Wide Web on dpf.com. There's a lot of boxes. You have to be freaking organized to, like, function pre-internet. The Snuggies diaper. The Van Gogh special. I don't even know what that means. This order sheet doesn't come with any type of visuals, so I'm trying to picture, like, what everything would look, look like. So that is pretty much what a DPF printed newsletter comprised of. So let's look at the website, at the old website. I almost forgot about this incontinence catalog that I found that was in all the stuff. Okay, look at that. What's going on here? There's a leg strap, there's a rubber flange, a penile sheath, okay, and an outlet cap. Using the urinal this way will require, will require frequent emptying due to small capacity. So that's it. It just collects your pee, like right there, and you just wear your pee. Here's another interesting uh, device. I don't know. I, it's not convincing me at all. I'd rather go with diapers. This is a Sears Home Health Care Catalog from 1995. Let's see what kind of diapers they got listed. They have like a hybrid pad thingy, some attends, some boosters, which I think you put in your underwear. You stick them in your underwear like a pad. Now we are at the internet age and the earliest capture I can find of dpf.com on archive.org is in February 1997. So we're just getting ready for St. Patty's Day and it looks like up here are some of the new products um, on the site for this month. And here is the awesome logo. I love that logo. I remember seeing this back in 1996. Wow. Yes, 25 years ago. <laughs> um, so there's the old school counter. I remember these. I had one on my site too. And of course, um, if you're under 18, they have this page specifically for them, which tells them that you are not alone. If you're a kid 18 or under, this is not a website for you. Um, but because but before you go, we want you to know that you are not alone and to come back when you are an adult. And yeah, I remember those feelings of being alone and thinking that you are completely by yourself. And am I weird? Why do I feel this way? <laughs> and all that stuff before you found the internet, right? You know, the newsletter started in 1980. And it goes on and on. We publish a newsletter six times a year. 
and there is a online roster and the um, and the printed roster and the printed roster is a lot bigger so here is a site map where to go let's check out the uh, introduction to the DPF roster So the online roster has a total number of, let's see, the online roster passes 700. I cannot access this. Let's Let's go to create a roster. Okay, so the newsletter has over 1,600 uh, members listed. And yeah, that's, this is worldwide. That's pretty good, that's bigger than Capcom. Aviation, WS's Water Sports, S&M. Um, I'm not too sure what this one is. It's L with lover, so I guess it means you are open to other people to play with and that you don't categorize yourself in one of the other ones by gay straight leather catheters ah. here's the fun part the introduction to parties and they're listing parties from worldwide what are you feeling hmm oh okay so here's a bunch of questions that um, people now would ask, which is, this page is trigger triggering old feelings of fear and doubt. What could a party of diaper-wearing people be like? Will they be weird or crazy? What will they do? Will I feel comfortable? Should I wear a diaper if I go? Will there be overt sex? Will the people be friendly or likable? And I feel like anyone who hasn't gone to an event before has the exact same questions. What typically does happen? <laughs> it almost feels like your first day in kindergarten. Yes, it really does. And you're not sure what to do. You're not sure how to dress. Should you show your diaper? <laughs> Everyone smiles, but it doesn't seem like a big deal after all. You sneak back to your car and put on your diaper. <laughs> Recent parties. In the past year, DPF parties have been held in New York, LA, Calgary. <sighs> Let's see, Australia, Sweden, England, Ohio, New Jersey. Yeah, pretty much like it is now, kind of all over the place. Photos. Uh, we need the approval of all the people in the photographs before they can be published online. We click to party announcements and all the regional directors are listed, so I guess you can um, contact them or write to them or email them to let them know that you're interested and put them on the mailing list. And here are some party announcements for 1997. Texas. Wow, there's a lot. And here are the information for the parties. There's a low turnout, only six today at the Washington Luncheon. Now would be now called a munch. Oh, Chula Vista campsite. I'm not sure they talk about how many people there were, but it seems like a pretty decent number. Oh, over 17 people at the New Year's party event. So now let's look at find a babysitter. Here you can. Um, apply to be a pro babysitter in your area or you can go here to find a babysitter I'm sure pro babysitters have existed way before this sexual services are not normally part of the services provided by DPF babysitters but there are not restrictions to the to the relationships developed by babysitters and their clients You do not have to be a professional, just someone who wants to have fun being a babysitter to a big baby. To register, you must be a list listed DPF member, and then you can put all your info here and send it to Tommy, 
and then you're gonna be listed so let's look at some of these babysitters as of 1997 we got a male babysitter here in New York $30 per hour or a hundred dollars per day and here is someone who is a male or and female sitter up in Syracuse New York and they're charging zero so they are a volunteer here's a female yeah 30 hour 30 dollars per hour or 150 per day 250 for a weekend that's a pretty good price here's Josie in, in Pecola Florida and she's only charging 200 for the whole weekend and she has adult baby furniture oh, that sounds awesome by day is $40 okay this is a male sitter it's only $10 an hour Wow Wow weekend is $400 for Karen in uh, Hollywood cuz she's got to pay those Hollywood rents and she does have adult baby furniture and she's a quote professional sitter I just saw that right now that there is a professional versus uh, people who didn't take the professional sitter I don't know I'm not sure what the difference is Ooh, look at this Ronnie is free up in Oregon here okay let's click best story best AB story ever written is is that so it's a lot of chapters looks epic they have a mommy phone call service here mommy Ann. and let's see it cost $25 for 15 minutes if you came to this page because you clicked on don't go here you're a very naughty little boy or little girl and must be punished and there is a check you, you can uh, select at least one of the following punishments have a surprise there's an important secret message on this place if you find it you can get a free gift I'm not sure okay is this a photoshopped picture yeah they are <laughs> True diaper tales. So in the newsletter, there are a lot of origin stories written in by everybody. Uh, but here are some that we think are worthwhile reading. So I clicked on the store part, and they have big baby clothing, videos, audio tapes, hypnosis, stories, books, and lots more. So it looks like there's some sale going on here. Here is a... Um, request for a catalog and it is free the full catalog is also available online oh wow it looks like there is a lot more babysitters listed than in the 1997 so that's pretty badass Australia a day is what a day is eighteen hundred dollars in Australia the weekend is thirty six hundred oh Meg 800 for the weekend flexible negotiable oh that's only ten dollars an hour oh wow there's a lot I mean some of these are munches too like nowadays we wouldn't really consider a munch a party but here everything's listed I hope you enjoyed this little look back at DPF and Tommy. The only way for people to really get in touch with each other and find common ground and it pretty much went down in history. Nowadays it's we're all spoiled. There's so many ways to connect, so many things to do and the information is so quick. There's so many different platforms and ABDL has permeated pretty much all of them from Tumblr to IG to Twitter to YouTube to um, Patreon to DeviantArt there is each one of them has its own grouping of ABDL and it is pretty freaking amazing